Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about Plex Media Server. I've already given you my top 10 tips on how to get the very best performance out of your Plex Media Server NAS and of course the very best NAS you can get for around 500. Today I want to talk about a thousand. Now for those who didn't catch the other video, let me explain. Currencies are different, YouTube's watched all over the world and when I want to talk about the most affordable NAS or the best NAS you can get for a certain amount of money, I have to take into account that currencies are different. Pounds, dollars, euro and more. All of these different conversions and all these different currencies mean that the number constantly changes. What I'm trying to aim for right now are the best three NASs that you can buy right now for £1,000, dollars or euros. Now it will be a bit vague, maybe a little bit over, a little bit under, but that is what I'm focusing on. Now for that 1,000 of your currency, we are looking at where you've got a NAS that can transcode almost all 1080p media, that can do some 4K media, will give you a great amount of storage included to include your hard drives and include your local tax. This is what you get for that 1K. So if you've put aside 1,000 of your currency, to buy a Plex Media Server NAS, this could well be the video for you. If you're looking at Hong Kong dollars, you're looking at Australian dollars, you're looking at Taiwanese dollars and more, this may not be the one for you. And do check out, make sure you get your currency conversion in check to find out what that is to a thousand. Now, all the devices I'm gonna talk about today, I wanna to focus on Plex as much as possible. At the end of the video, I'll talk more about the brands themselves. But the reason I wanna focus on Plex is because for people that are trying to buy a new Plex Media Server, it can be fantastically difficult. This can be for a number of reasons. One of the main reasons being that very few NASs will focus so much on Plex Media Server as the one of the reasons people should buy this particular device over another one, but will tout things like virtual machine surveillance, um, shared files, DLNA, 4K, but none of them will say this NAS is good for Plex. The reason being that Plex provides the software, not the hardware, and none of the NAS brands produce Plex or produce that software. So there's always going to be a slight sense of ambiguity between them. The result is for you, the consumer, that when you're trying to buy a NAS, you're looking at quite literally thousands of current devices from different NAS brands and are just confused. You don't know what to look for, but don't worry, that's what this video is about. We're going to focus on Plex, on some devices, and the top three NAS for a thousand. So, in first place, Probably the oldest of the three, but it has to be said, still damn reliable at the time of recording right now in the late summer 2019. It is the DS Nomad 8 Plus from Synology. I know you saw that coming. If you know about NAS, and you probably have already seen this NAS while you've been doing research, but for a NAS that includes full support, great performance, you know, support from the brand Amplex, and a whole bunch of storage and future proofing, it's very hard to beat this device. The 918 Plus arrives with a quad-core Intel Celeron CPU, the J3455, great CPU, with 4K support, <coughs> 4 gig of DDR3L memory that can be upgraded to 8 officially and 16 unofficially. Shh. It also arrives with 4 bays of storage that you can mix and match drives if you so choose, and you can, with thanks to SHR, but I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you upgrade down the line, and it even arrives with two NVMe SSD ports built into the base of the device, so you can improve performance at a later date if you so choose. <coughs> Sorry about that. Terrible cough. So, probably blown your ears off. Sorry, earphone users. So, with this device, at that price level, you can get some 3 TBs, maybe even 4 TB drives if you shop around and still keep it under a thousand. Why is this such a big deal? One, well, this is one of the few NASes out there, particularly with that CPU, that Plex has access to the transcoding engine. You will need a Plex pass and you will need to go into the encoding settings and click the option for make my CPU hurt, but you will be able to let Plex utilize the transcoding engine, the graphical embedding uh, part of that CPU uh, that quad core 1.5 gigahertz CPU that can be burst up to 2.3 gigahertz per core, nerd, and allows you to be able to change those files and play them back a lot more suitably on your devices. For those that don't know, transcoding is when a file is changed in size, format, resolution, file type, all these different ways a file is repackaged so your client device, your phone, your iPad, your whatever, can receive a better version of that file for playback. Maybe it doesn't support the codec. Maybe it doesn't have much in the way of storage. Maybe you're on a limited data connection or a metered data connection. That's where transcoding can be incredibly important. And for those bigger, enormous 4K video files, it is invaluable to bear that in mind. Now, there are other NAS brands out there, and I will focus a lot more on the brands themselves at the end of the video. But let's move on to number two. 
QNAP. Uh, as, as always, I mentioned Synology, I gotta mention QNAP. I mentioned QNAP, gotta mention Synology. The QNAP for this price level is the TS453BE. Now, it's available in two versions, a two gig and a four gig model, but both of them can be upgraded up to eight gig officially and 16 gig unofficially. Why do I talk about this device? Well, because it gives you everything, really, that the other device did. It gives you that same CPU, the Intel Celeron quad-core. It gives you two to four gig of memory that can be upgraded to eight. It even arrives with an HDMI out port that allows you to directly connect your TV to the NAS and enjoy Plex with zero latency on that device without utilizing the network and some of the inherent bandwidth problems that may you may encounter when lots of people are accessing the NAS or just the network in general. Now, it doesn't have the NVMe SSD cache slot that the Synology does, but it does have a PCIe Express slot that allows you to upgrade your port at a later date as your network may require it with data getting so big or allow you to install an SSD cache card at a later date too. But of course, that is an additional expense. Now, it's worth mentioning the TS453BE is a lower price for the base unit than that Synology, which means you can definitely get bigger drives even within your cache range, which means at this budget, you are looking at a great little NAS for under a thousand that has at least 16 terabytes of raw storage included and still keeps you on budget for a great device going forward. With 4K support and transcoding of 1080p media done very, very easily indeed, and some 4K media done, it can be very, very impressive indeed as Aplex Media Server NAS. Um, I should have mentioned at the top of the video that when I mentioned transcoding, unless I mention clicks specifically, take it as read, I mean native transcoding. That is your device, interacting via first-party software and transcoding files on the fly without Plex. Plex requires more demand of the CPU for transcoding and you will get better Plex transcoding from the Synology than the QNAP because they seem to be able to allow Plex to utilize the transcoding and graphical embedding on that more on the Synology than the QNAP. Now, the third NAS I want to talk about, and if you've seen my 500 video, you'll know that that you'll probably see this coming. But for the 1000, it's gonna be that device behind me. It's the Acer Store, Nimbus Store 4. It was released not even two months ago at the time of this recording. And it has to be said, it is damn well impressive as a Plex Media Server for so, so many reasons. First and foremost, because the CPU inside is the J41005, a new generation Celeron compared to the others. And this CPU is a monster beast inside there. It's got great clock speed, I'm sure it's on the screen right now, and it even arrives with four gig of DDR4 memory, higher frequency, and can be upgraded to eight or 16 unofficially across those two slots. Now, this device arrived with HDMI as well, but HDMI 2.0a, so true 4K, which means the previous unit arrived with um, an HDMI port that could play 4K directly to Plex, but only at 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second for 1080p. Whereas this device behind me does 4K at 60 frames per second, which if you're gonna watch 4K, you may well want that. Although don't get me wrong, a lot of people argue you can't tell the difference with human eyes, but let you be the judge, not me. Now, with that new CPU, you've got much better performance with a CPU benchmark score of 2,800. With uh, those other, other CPU ranking about 2,500, it is better performance overall. And in Plex, it is genuinely impressive performance. It, it pretty much transcoded everything 1080p that I threw at it, and even a lot more 4K than the other devices. Now, we haven't seen this tier storage move from Synology yet, but we have seen this CPU featured in other QNAP NASes. But those QNAP NASs that utilize this hardware are a lot more expensive and you will not be able to get this same package for under a thousand. I'm looking at things like the HF453DX and the TBS453DX. What this device behind me, the uh, Nimbus Store 4 has as well, is those 2.5 GBE ports. So one of the advantages, of course, I gave to that QNAP is that it has a PCIe Express slot that lets you upgrade your ports for later for as data types, 4K, 5K, 8K, 12K. As these file types get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, the bandwidth and the network connectivity in your devices just isn't gonna be enough. One gigabit ethernet is just not gonna cut it. And eventually, either internet service providers are gonna upgrade their routers to take advantage of this internal network speed to remove that bottleneck between the router and the upload download to the internet and your devices, or 
they'll start introducing switch-based companion devices to help move the flow along. A lot of you can still get into that world now, and by doing uh, going for a NAS like the Nimbus Law 4 or going for the TS453BE, you have access to upgradability of those network ports that are completely backwards compatible with the now tech and also open the door to the future tech later. So those are the best three Plex NASes right now for 1000 that include storage media of between two and four terabytes per bay and all your local tax. Now, let's talk about the brands themselves because as much as you might want a Plex NAS and the NAS itself will be 80 to 90% used just for Plex, there's still that 10%. You want to maximize your investment and I get that. Well, all three of these devices arrive with a number of different features and applications and functionality for you to really get excited about. First and foremost, you've got things like surveillance. All three arrive with their own surveillance platform, surveillance station, QVR Pro, surveillance, surveillance center. All of them are completely bespoke, internet and network accessible um, user interfaces of cameras using IP cameras like the Rio Link up there or a video I've got coming soon with another Rio Link there and allow you to be able to monitor your home or business effectively with audio alerts and more, and pan tilt zoom and stuff like that. On top of that, widespread backup options from backing up to the cloud to other NASes to USB, backing up mobile phones automatically, and all of them arrive with internet and network access from anywhere in the world, from your sofa to Singapore. Now, although they've got all of that functionality, some NASes are better at some things than others. The Synology, for example, has unbeatably the best first-party app selection out there with Synology Office, Synology Drive, Synology Moments, Synology everything, Synology Active Backup. Do check out my videos on those applications. But, and I'll stop trying to talk so fast, I'm so sorry, QNAP has incredible third-party support. And if you would rather use your proprietary software and your proprietary platforms, you're gonna see a lot of advantages of going down the QNAP route and save a little bit of money rather than getting that software and going for that hardware. And although Acer Store seems to give you a little weaker impression on both of these platforms, it does stick and do those mainstays very damn well. And things like surveillance and backups and HDMI output and their own dedicated applications and emulation and gaming and more, they're still a great platform nevertheless. And you still get the best performance in Plex out of the three of them right now. But this has been the best Plex NAS for $1,000 euros and pounds. If you are curious, do check out um, a currency converter and find out what exactly £1,000 is in your currency to let you know if any of these sound like a bargain to you. But otherwise, if you are interested in buying a NAS, do go to the guys at Span.com. NAS experts, 25 years in the biz, and they know what they are doing. Alternatively, go to the link in the description to the Plex Media server um, post at Span, uh, NAS Compares, where I've got a different post that details links to all of the devices I've talked about and goes into a lot more detail about those specifications. And finally, if you've enjoyed this video and want to stay abreast of all things to do with NAS, because once you've bought it, you want to play with it and do some stuff with it, click subscribe, click the little bell to stay notified, and do stay subscribed to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.